In this video, you will learn about the Retractable Roof Production System, or RRPS for short, and how it can be used to sustainably increase yields while growing high-quality plants that are naturally strong, more disease and insect resistant, while optimizing water usage and minimizing energy inputs. The RRPS has been scientifically developed by Cravo over the last 10 years by integrating plant physiology with the experience and best practices of commercial growers producing in open fields, conventional greenhouses and shade houses, and those using retractable roof greenhouses and shade houses. You will now see a sample of crops that have been produced using the RRPS. The RRPS has been used in breeding programs, helping to increase the speed of growth without plants losing the natural characteristics of outdoor growing plants. They have also been used to grow strong, healthy young plants that have thick leaves and big root systems so that they can be successfully transplanted into fields, other greenhouses, or forests. When transplanting young plants into retractable roof houses, the ability to gradually expose them to outdoor conditions virtually eliminates the losses during the transplanting period. When transplanting during very hot conditions, Growers typically leave the roofs closed 90% for the first four days to allow the plants to acclimate to their new environment. This strategy helps prevent the young plants from excessive stress and has proven to significantly reduce or eliminate the chance of the young plants getting virus. Crops like fresh herbs and lettuce have been produced with plants growing faster with thick leaves helping to improve taste, texture, and shelf life. The desirable natural color of the foliage is enhanced and foliar diseases have been reduced due to the improved climates. Retractable roofs have also been used to produce annuals and perennials, helping to produce plants which are naturally compact and are properly conditioned to make the transition to the garden center and final consumer's garden. Both cut and potted flowers have been grown with plants developing more flowers, thick leaves and strong stems helping to improve quality and shelf life. Potted ornamental shrubs and trees have also benefited from being produced using the RRPS. The root systems in the pots are protected from excessive cold and heat, allowing plants to grow throughout the summer with fewer problems to roots due to extreme temperatures, excessive transpiration, or excessive release of controlled release fertilizers. When growing vegetable crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. Plants produce many fruit and naturally tend to have an optimal balance between leaves and fruit, eliminating the need for extensive leaf or fruit pruning. Pollination in the retractable roof occurs more naturally since plants are exposed to wind and lower humidity levels when the roof is retracted. Fruit produced using the RRPS tends to be larger in size with a higher bricks. In addition, tomatoes grown in the retractable roof tend to be firmer with more meat, allowing tomatoes to be easily sliceable like a field tomato, but yet with the appearance of a greenhouse grown tomato. In shelf life comparisons, Tomatoes from the retractable roof house had a longer shelf life than those from the open field or a stationary roof. One of the first questions that growers have when they are introduced to the RRPS 
is what about the impact of insects? If you retract the roof, won't the insects come in and transmit virus? Experience has proven that insect pressure and virus is less in a retractable roof and that it is easier to manage. This is due to the changes in the plant development and the corresponding impact on insect reproduction. To document how plants develop differently in different production systems, Roma tomato young plants from the same tray were transplanted in Culiacan, Mexico on January the 20th, 2008 into the open field, a conventional net house, and a retractable roof house. Culiacan has a tropical climate with high temperatures and levels of solar radiation. Pictures were taken three months later on April 26 in the open field, in the conventional net house, and in the retractable roof house. One plant was taken out of each environment and put side by side so that the differences in the plant development could be easily observed. The plant on the left came from the open field the one in the center came from the net house, and the one on the right came from the retractable roof house. While these three plants have identical genetics, there is a noticeable difference in the quantity and size of the fruit and leaves. The open field tomato plant on the left is stunted due to the excessive heat and transpiration from being exposed to direct sunlight all day. The tomato plant from the conventional net house in the center has more vegetation and less fruit due to insufficient transpiration since the stationary roof blocked much of the light and radiation throughout the day. The tomato plant on the right from the retractable roof has a more optimum balance between leaves and fruit due to the optimal transpiration rate since the plant was exposed to direct sunlight during the early morning and late afternoon when the roof was retracted and had lower light and radiation midday when the roof was closed 90 percent to keep the direct sunlight off the plants. This picture shows you a close-up of the leaves and trusses the open field is on the left, the one on the center is from the stationary roof net house, and the one on the right is from the retractable roof. Again, you can see the difference in the size and quantity of leaves versus fruit between the three different production systems. I will now outline four main reasons which scientifically together explain why insect pressures are typically lower in the RRPS than in the open field or a conventional house. The first reason is that in the RRPS, insect net is installed on the perimeter walls, which will extend up four or five meters above the ground. Since insects tend to fly only 1.5 meters above the ground, the insect net will significantly reduce insect pressure inside compared to that in the open field. The second reason why insect pressures are reduced when using the RRPS is that when the roof is retracted, the exposure to direct sunlight and wind causes plants to develop and maintain very effective natural defense mechanisms like thick wax cuticles just like an outdoor grown plant. When temperatures outside are optimal, insect pressures are low because the plant's natural defense mechanisms are active, making the plants an unattractive food source for insects. This picture shows you two tomato leaves. The leaf on the top left came from a conventional house where the roof covering is stationary, and the one on the lower right came from a retractable roof house. In the conventional house, the roof covering causes a constant reduction in transpiration since the roof covering 
constantly blocks some or all of the UV radiation, reduces infrared radiation, blocks the wind, and traps the humidity, causing humidity levels inside to be higher than those outside. The plants react to the low transpiration rate by developing generally larger leaves with thin wax cuticles, since they do not need to protect themselves from high amounts of water loss. Unfortunately, the thin wax cuticles create leaves which are a desirable food source for insects, which helps explain why reproduction occurs rapidly once insects enter a conventional house. The leaf on the lower right came from a retractable roof house and was exposed to direct sunlight for several hours every day, which increased the exposure to UV, infrared, wind, and lower humidity levels. The outdoor environment causes the plants to transpire large amounts of water, causing the plants to react by producing leaves that have shiny, thick wax cuticles. The thicker wax cuticle helps the plant protect itself against excessive transpiration, but also acts as a natural deterrent to insects, since thick leaves are tougher for insects to eat. The third reason that insect pressure can be less in the RRPS is that the roof covering can be used to help protect plants from the excessive transpiration and water stress, which can occur when the plants are exposed to direct sunlight midday when air temperatures are greater than 25 C. When plants are grown in the open field in the summer, they experience excessive transpiration midday, especially if there is wind and the relative humidity is low. When plants lose too much water, the water stress becomes excessive and leaves start to droop, thus lowering the plant's natural defenses against insects. In the RRPS, when outside temperatures and radiation is high, the roofs will close 90% to intercept the infrared radiation, block the wind, and increase the relative humidity to prevent the plant from experiencing the excessive transpiration and water stress that a field-grown plant experiences. By preventing the plants from experiencing excessive water loss, plants' self-defense mechanisms are maintained, causing insects to avoid these plants as they search out weaker plants to reproduce on, which are more suitable hosts for their young. The fourth reason why insect pressures can be less in the RRPS is that the insect reproduction rate tends to be low in the RRPS due to the overall change in the environment and the resulting change in the plant structure and self-defense mechanisms. You already saw how leaves of plants in the RRPS tend to have thick wax cuticles. In addition, you can see in this picture that the tomato plant grown using the RRPS has developed lots of protective hair right where the new tender growth is. We know that overall insect populations are influenced by the availability of food for insects and the suitability of the food supply for young insects, particularly just after they hatch. Adult insects will choose to lay eggs on plants that are sick or weak since they are an easy food source for the young insects to eat. Consequently, if you see a plant with many insects and eggs, you know that the plant's natural defense mechanisms are weak. For crops like tomatoes, where white fly and virus is a problem, it is believed that virus is transmitted to the plants by the babies, not the adults. The low insect reproduction rates in the RRPS and the belief that it is the babies that transmit virus to the tomato plants has been supported based on observations in Sinaloa, Mexico over the last six years. The following video was taken on March the 7th, 2009 of a cherry tomato crop being grown using the RRPS. You can see that the leaves look generally healthy with no signs of virus. 
Upon closer examination of the underside of the leaves, you can see that there is a significant adult whitefly population. However, there was no sign of eggs or nymphs. So adult whitefly were present, but they were not reproducing on the tomato plants, and there was no signs of virus. Normal protocol would dictate that treatments are applied to kill the whitefly before the whitefly pressure became this severe. But this grower already had three years of experience growing using the RRPS without significant virus problems, and so he had become lazy in the treatments for whitefly. One interesting result of these experiences is that growers are now frequently able to do most of their disease and insect control simply by spraying soap and garlic, making it easier to produce using organic protocols. The introduction to the RRPS will be continued on part two.